Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about the new bow LG 4DN and how disappointing it is. At first, when I saw that Venti is getting a bow for himself, I was pretty excited because Venti is my favorite character and that's why he's my only character of level 90. But then I looked at the actual stat of the bow and I was just so disappointed. The first problem with this bow is its base stat. It has really low base attack compared to the other 5 star weapon Skyward Harp. It has 60 lower base attack than Skyward Harp, which is about a 10% difference. Furthermore, its substat is Energy Recharge. Now Venti already get Energy Recharge as a Ascension bonus. Here you can see I have 142 Energy Recharge without any weapon equipped or artifact equipped. It's not like Venti's Elemental Burst have a high energy cost either. It's only at 60, and of course the high end energy cost is 80, which we have seen in Xiangling or Xingqiu. But Venti's Elemental Burst also refund him energy. When you finish casting your Elemental Burst, you get 15 energy back. So really, your energy cost on your Elemental Burst is only 45. Of course, this doesn't count the fact that your artifact might have energy recharge line on them. For example, uh, let's say this one that I have 5% on. This one that I have another 5% on, and on my flower that I have 10% on. Now, of course, surely that maybe I'm just lucky, but it is inevitable that you might have 5 or 10% energy recharge on your self stat. So in total, your energy recharge are looking at 140 ish. Combine it with the fact that usually when you're playing Fantasy, you're looking to play him in a high density environment where there's a lot of mob, so the chances of you getting energy particle are even greater. You definitely do not need to build energy recharge explicitly. You don't need 50% energy recharge on your weapon. That could have been 20% critical rate or like 40% critical damage, for example. Moving on for its effect. The first effect is that it grants you 60 elemental mastery, which is a nice to have, but not definitely not a game changer. It doesn't justify using this weapon over something like the Skyward Harp, which is also another 5 star weapon bow. But the most interesting part about this weapon is of course this world record weapon description, which to summarize is that you have to attack 4 times whether all, uh, you're on field or off field, and after that you will grant your entire party a buff, is 20% attack and 100 elemental mastery for 12 seconds, and then for the next 20 seconds you cannot get this buff again. And now people must be thinking, wait, Venti's a support, so him giving his party like a lot of all of that is so good, this bow is so insane. And that's, you're partly right. But, you have to understand, the value of this bow is actually a lot, a lot less than you think. Let's start with Venti himself. Now, they obviously intended for you to just cast Venti ult and then switch off so that you can get the buff. At this point in time, we will attack the 4 times, so we will have the buff by now. But notice something is that we already casted the Venti's Elemental Burst. And because Venti's Elemental Burst snapshot, it actually means that Venti himself will not get the buff on his Elemental Burst. Let me do this again but using Bennett as an example. So imagine that we're, the buff we're getting is Bennett buff instead. And notice how the damage number on Venti's Elemental Burst are not changing. And that is because of snapshotting. So now you might say, oh what if I just attack a few times before I cast his burst? That you could do, however there's still more problems to that. Now that approach has two problems. The first one is that of course it takes slightly more field time which means overall you lose a bit of DPS, but the second problem is that Venti's Elemental Burst only have a cooldown of 15 seconds. Remember that the buff have a 20 second lockout, meaning that you cannot get the buff again for the next 20 seconds. So if you cast your Venti's Elemental Burst after 15 seconds, no matter what, you will not get the buff on Venti. Now what you could do of course again is to delay your Elemental Burst by another 5 seconds, so as soon as it's ready, you say, no, I don't want to cast uh, Venti's Elemental Burst, I'm going to wait 5 more seconds. But then we run into the conflict, and that is, why do you want energy recharge on Venti if you're not going to cast his burst on cooldown, right? I think people commonly think that Venti is just a CC bot for some reason, but he can actually dish up really really good damage. So switching him to a weapon that have no good stat, and the fact that the effect doesn't even apply to him, it's just so much damage losses. 
Moving on to the next topic and that is for some reason, the buff have a 20 second lockout but only, only last for 12 seconds. Meaning that your uptime is about 60%. And what's more important is that you're spending about half of those 12 seconds in Venti's Elemental Burst. This is a slight problem with Venti's Elemental Burst and that is melee character might have a hard time hitting the stuff inside and so again you're losing value on the buff because the buff is ticking. Surely you can still hit the stuff inside if you play Ganyu or Klee but then you're limiting your choices to range character and I don't think that's a good thing. The final thing I want to point out is that a lot of the time the buff only benefit like 2 characters in your party instead of the 4 characters that you're thinking of. Here is a very very popular composition involving Ganyu, Mona, and Venti. Here the only damage dealer is Venti and Ganyu. Mona and Diona are there for support purposes and they basically do no damages. Since Diona and Mona are not doing damages, the attack buff or the EM buff are basically useless on them. So the only person who benefit are Ganyu and Venti. But then you remember that Venti himself cannot get the buff. So really it's only Ganyu who is benefiting from the buff. It is at this point that you realize that your so-called buff for the entire party is not actually for the entire party. Now even though I have pointed out a lot of bad thing about this boat, I actually want to call out that the boat itself is not actually that bad. Uh, the buff or the potential to give a buff to the entire party is so really good when you can use a or find a scenario to use it. But the real reason why the boat is so bad is because you have to spend money for it and that's pretty much it. Comparatively, you can spend that money for Staff of Homer, you can spend that money on WGS, which is just our last banner. Pulling the banner for this bow or potentially the Skyward Blade, it's just so bad, it's just not worth it. And that's the real reason why the bow is bad, it's because it costs money for it. Now there's actually still a couple of good use of this bow. Uh, let me go to the party select screen and take a look at all the bow character, right? Uh, for Fischl, it's not really good because her all snapshot and again, Fischl does really really good damage. However, for other bow character, for example, Diona, this is actually not a bad bow since Diona is mostly a support. So it's basically just getting a free buff for your other party again. For Child, this bow is actually okay as well since most of the time you're playing like a Fischl, Beidou Child composition or a Shangling Child something something composition and the the buff can really benefit a lot of these characters when you put them together in your party. The biggest thing you have to be worried about is that the all of these ability are snapshot ability and similar to Venti. You have to make sure you get the buff before you cast their elemental burst. And that might require extra step to do it and so we'll have to see. So now the actual use case for this bow, whale speed running. And yes, this bow is basically designed for whale speed running. Let's take a look at this team of pop here involving Zhongli, Bennett, Hu Tao, and Ganyu. You might have seen this composition before and the goal is pretty much just one shot with uh, Hu Tao's elemental burst off the crowd aura provided from Ganyu. And so let me put it this way right, you put the bow on Ganyu and then you cast all their skills so you proc the Ganyu buff. And then at this point, you finally cast the Hu Tao buff to one shot. At this moment, all the problem of the bow go away. The fact that it only lasts 12 seconds and have a 20 second lockout don't matter because you're one-shotting. The fact that the buff only benefit one person here which is Hu Tao don't matter because you're one-shotting with Hu Tao. The fact that you lose damage on Ganyu don't matter because Ganyu is just a support and you're just here to provide the cryo aura. So at this point the buff is actually good and the bow is actually good. Not to mention that at refine 5 this is actually a really really big buff which you know the whale will get refine 5. So this is uh, how you're gonna use the bow. In fact, I took a slight detour and went to ask a couple whale who are really really smart and good at fear crafting, including Tony, who is a really really smart uh, Chinese whale and he does a lot of fear crafting as well. And it just happened that they all come to the same conclusion and that is, you put that bow on Ember. And then you do her elemental burst to proc the crowd aura and get the buff. And then you do some one shotting. Yes, that's pretty much it. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, the reason why I want to make this video mostly is because I'm just so disappointed in the bow, but also as a fair warning to anyone who's looking forward to that bow for their venti, that's how this bow is just not really good. 
Like me, for example, I really wanted the bow for my level 90 Fenty, but I'm not gonna pull for it because I just think it's it's horrible. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope to see you guys next time. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.